from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, March the 29th, 2022. Twelve Arab Israelis with suspected ties to the Islamic State terror group were arrested in an overnight operation last night by Israeli security forces, mainly in the town of Um el Fahim, which is the hometown of the two terrorists, also IS supporters, who murdered two Israeli border police officers in Hadera Sunday night. Arrests were also made in several other Arab cities in Israel. The terrorist who murdered four Israeli civilians a week ago in Beersheba was also said to have been a supporter of the jihadist terror group. And reports of what appears to be another terror attack this evening, this in the central Israeli suburb of Bnei Brak. The Times of Israel reporting that five people were killed by a gunman who opened fire. Ynet saying the shootings took place in two locations in the city and that the suspect, believed to be a Palestinian from the West Bank, was believed to have been shot and killed. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett is set to hold security consultations with defense officials on the shooting tonight. We will have more for you on this developing story tomorrow. Israel's Defense Minister Benny Gantz met today with the King of Jordan, King Abdullah II, in Amman, just ahead of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, which begins this Friday evening, extending best wishes to the king and to the people of Jordan. Gantz's office said he also discussed the measures that Israel is planning to take in order to enable freedom of prayer in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, the West Bank, in particular regarding Palestinians coming to Jerusalem during the holy month to worship. Also discussing security coordination in an effort to keep the calm in Jerusalem during this time, which often sees a rise in tensions. Gantz also, his office wrote, emphasized the importance of maintaining regional peace and stability and the need to fight terrorism in all its forms, specifically to act forcefully against ISIS, which has coordinated, it wrote, the recent attacks in Israel. Well, progress was made today to see Professor Deborah Lipstadt as the next U.S. Special Envoy to monitor and combat anti-Semitism. The U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee voted to advance Lipstadt's confirmation with a vote of 13 to 9, receiving a yes vote from all Democrats on the 22-member panel and from two Republicans, Mitt Romney and Marco Rubio. The entire Senate now needs to vote on Lipstadt's confirmation, and Jewish groups across the spectrum urged that vote to happen quickly, so that, the American Jewish Committee wrote, she can begin her vital work as soon as possible. Democratic Senator Ben Cardin and Republican Senator Rob Portman spearheaded a letter to U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken yesterday urging the U.S. to help reverse the United Nations Human Rights Council's disproportionate focus on Israel. Backed by 68 senators, 31 Democrats, and 37 Republicans, the letter calls for an end to the Commission of Inquiry, or COI, an open-ended investigation of Israel regarding its treatment of the Palestinians, including accusations of human rights violations, approved by the Council last May, days after the war with terror group Hamas in Gaza. Which makes no mention, by the way, of the over 4,000 rockets fired by Hamas during that conflict into Israel. This one-sided approach, the senators wrote, is consistent with the UNHRC's continuing bias against Israel and the disproportionate use of resources in an ongoing campaign to disparage, discredit, and denounce Israel. By unfairly singling out Israel, the senators write, the UNHRC undermines its credibility to investigate human rights violations around the world. The COI, the senators noted, is the latest endeavor by UNHRC to discredit the only Jewish state and is likely to further fuel anti-Semitism worldwide. The American Jewish Committee's Project Interchange annual mayoral delegation arrived in Israel this week. 
held in collaboration with the U.S. Conference of Mayors. The bipartisan group consists of 12 mayors from 10 states taking part in a week-long experiential educational seminar, which the AJC writes will enable the mayors to gain a first-hand understanding of Israel's vibrant democracy, diverse society, and regional challenges. The American mayors will meet with both Jewish and Arab mayors and municipal officials in Israel and meet with Palestinian business and civic leaders in Ramallah to also discuss common challenges they all face. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, March the 29th at 7 o'clock, the latest sermon from Rabbi Emil Hirsch. At 7.30, jazz legend Wynton Marsalis headlines a diverse group of artists, musicians, and thinkers in a program fighting racism and anti-Semitism, celebrating the power of culture and offering perspectives on a shared omni-American future. At 9, part 2 of Mark Golub's interview with Tal Keenan. At 10, an encore presentation of In the Spotlight with legendary shoe impresario Stuart Weitzman, who speaks with Abigail Pogrebin. And coming up next, it's the ILTV's Insider. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday, March the 29th, 2022. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well. <laughs>